The escalating tensions between the US and Russia hit an all-time high in March 2023 due to a dramatic incident caught on camera over the Black Sea. An American Reaper drone was conducting routine patrols over international waters when two Russian fighter jets appeared out of nowhere. The dangerous confrontation resulted in one of the jets crashing into the drone, sending it hurtling into the sea below. American officials have accused the Russian pilots of reckless and unprofessional behavior, not to mention damaging the environment with fuel dumping. However, Moscow has denied any wrongdoing, claiming that the crash was due to sharp maneuvering and alleging that the drone was flying towards their territory with its transponders turned off in clear violation of flight restrictions put in place due to the ongoing war in Ukraine. The incident has sparked outrage on both sides, leading to top officials from both countries calling for answers. Hostilities Amidst the ongoing Ukraine war, tensions between Russia and the U.S. have escalated into a potentially dangerous situation. The U.S. Air Force has been keeping an eye on the area using their state-of-the-art MQ-9 Reaper drones with a 20-meter wingspan and a cost estimated at $32 million. Most often used for surveillance, the UAVs can also be armed. This aircraft uses advanced sensors to aid in gathering intelligence, and their flight autonomy capabilities enable them to conduct reconnaissance missions for extended periods. But things took a dramatic turn in mid-March 2023 when, according to U.S. officials, an MQ-9 reconnaissance drone was conducting routine operations in international airspace when it was intercepted by two Su-27 jets flying close. During one of the first known hostile interactions between Russian and American aircraft over the Black Sea, one of the Russian fighters intercepted and dumped fuel on an American drone, as captured in recently released footage. According to Pentagon spokesman Brigadier General Patrick Ryder, the Russian aircraft flew close to the drone for a nerve-wracking 30 to 40 minutes before finally colliding. One of the fighters hit its propeller, forcing remote operators to crash it into the ocean, resulting in the complete loss of the MQ-9. The U.S. Defense Department is currently working to declassify images from the incident to provide more insight. Recklessness. Retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell explained that the jet's maneuver was likely an attempt to take the drone out by washing the fuel into its engine. He went on to describe the incident, stating, quote, As he pulls the aircraft up, he hasn't got the aerodynamics because he isn't flying very fast. The fighter gets very close to the body of the drone and almost certainly just clips the propeller. Even though Bell did call the pilot incompetent, he admitted the collision was probably accidental. It nonetheless put the Russian aircraft in danger. After the U.S. released the footage, Ryder defended the decision, arguing how important it was to show their opponent's reckless and dangerous behavior. In turn, Air Force General James B. Hecker, commander of U.S. Air Forces Europe and Air Forces Africa, sustained, quote, in fact, this unsafe and unprofessional act by the Russians nearly caused both aircraft to crash. U.S. officials have admitted that it is not uncommon for Russian aircraft to intercept U.S. aircraft over the Black Sea, and that there had been other intercepts in recent weeks. However, as stated by National Security Council Communications Coordinator John Kirby, the Reaper episode was unique in how unsafe, unprofessional, and reckless the Russian actions were. The incident marked the peak of the increasing risk of direct confrontation between the superpowers. As Ryder clarified, although the U.S. does not seek conflict with Russia, the country emphasized its support for Ukraine. International Standards From the launch of the Ukrainian invasion, the Russian and U.S. military aircraft had not come into direct physical contact, making the incident a critical moment in the increasing tensions between the two nations. Accordingly, Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov described their relations as being at the lowest point and in a deplorable state. In fact, 
The Russian Ministry of Defense initially denied the Russian jet had come into contact with the drone at all, alleging their jets, quote, scrambled to identify the intruder. They also sustained that the drone went into an unguided flight with a loss of altitude. Additionally, the ministry said that, quote, the drone flew with its transponders off, violating the boundaries of the temporary airspace regime established for the special military operation, communicated to all users of international airspace, and published in accordance with international standards. However, the Russian ambassador to the U.S., Anatoly Antonov, did remark that Russia does not want confrontation. He emphasized that the Russian Federation preferred not to create a situation where they could face unintended clashes or incidents with the United States. Moreover, the ambassador pointed out that his nation had previously informed the international community of the space delimiting a zone for special military operations, adding that their government has issued warnings against entering or penetrating these areas. Then he asked how the U.S. would react if a Russian UAV neared New York or San Francisco. While both presidents have been briefed on the incident, there has reportedly been no contact at the highest level between Moscow and Washington. Furthermore, Russian authorities assure they have not refused constructive dialogue, nor are they refusing it now. Still, while U.S. authorities maintain they are not in a position to speak about Russian intentions, ultimately, the intent mattered less than the facts. The American UAV was downed with close to non-existent possibilities of recovery. Mitigating Measures As John Kirby pondered, the drone, quote, has not been recovered, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to recover it. Where it fell into the Black Sea, it's very, very deep water, so we are still assessing whether there can be any kind of recovery effort mounted. There may not be. In any case, the official mentioned the U.S. did take steps to protect information aboard the aircraft. However, should Moscow attempt to recover the wreckage, the drone will most certainly not provide any valuable intelligence. Regardless, Russian officials have expressed their determination to seek whatever is left of the MQ-9 Reaper. The head of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, Sergei Narishkin, announced his country had the technological capability to recover the fragments, and U.S. officials believe that Russia has already sent ships to the area in question, somewhere off the coast of Crimea. Even so, General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, appeared relaxed about the possibility of the UAV being found, arguing, quote, It probably broke up. There's probably not a lot to recover, frankly. As far as the loss of anything of sensitive intelligence, etc., we would take and we did take mitigating measures, so we're quite confident that whatever was of value is no longer of value. Admittedly, officials did not disclose how they protected the Reaper. Nevertheless, the U.S. military has acknowledged in the past that they can remotely remove sensitive information and render the systems inoperable. Meanwhile, American officials keep working on declassifying the surveillance footage to shed light on the encounter, which has led to one of the most severe escalations between the two nations for many years. Thank you for watching our video. If you're a history buff and crave thrilling insights into modern military history, then you've come to the right place. Join the Dark Footage community now by hitting that subscribe button and immersing yourself in all of our Dark Documentaries channels. And to never miss out on our latest releases, be sure to hit the bell icon. Stay tuned.